Our rules are simple, but the challenge is great. No shoulder pets, tames that can be carried, or typical boss dinos allowed. That means no Rexus, Therizinos, or any other dinos people normally use in these fights. Equipped with official server cap saddles, our 19 contenders will be backed by the commanding presence of a loyal Uteranus providing that extra boost. All competitors will go into battle with food to provide a healing effect. Herbivores will have plenty of sweet veggie cakes, and carnivores and omnivores will have cooked meat. No Overseer because the movement speed required to get through the tech cave then chase the Overseer during the fight would shorten our list by a lot. It's important to note that tames in this series aren't typically used during boss battles because of the amount of mutations it would take to make them competitive. I'll be applying around 23,000 health and 1200% melee through mutations and experience levels to all dinos that compete. This will give them all a fair shot at defeating at least one of the Guardians. It won't always be feasible to reach these stats depending on the dinos I'm using, but I will let you know the amount of mutations and levels it took in order to reach it. All competitors start out with 50 base health and melee and 40 points and everything else before I apply mutations and experience levels. Use this information and decide on your own servers if the juice is worth the squeeze. Competitors are required to fight the Megapithecus, Broodmother, then Dragon on all difficulties, starting with Gamma, then Beta, finishing with Alpha. Their success will be annotated on this scorecard with a pass or fail system. Now let's introduce our competitor and see if they have what it takes. Casteroides, aka the Big Fat Beaver, roams the riverways on Ark and is no stranger to most players. They create beaver dams that house an abundance of cementing paste, wood, rare flowers, rare mushrooms, and silica pearls, so they're usually a pretty hot target for everyone. The stats the underbeaves are coming in with required 50 mutations and 60 experience levels. 25 mutations and 20 experience levels went into health, and 25 mutations and 40 experience levels went into melee. Now let's see if they have what it takes. The squad was busting at the seams with beaver fever, so we fired up the green portal and stormed into the Gamma Megapithecus stronghold. If you're a fan of the series, then you know what I'm about to rant about. Drag weight doesn't matter. This is probably the most definitive proof that the drag weight isn't the reason why the bosses can ignore the creatures. The Castoroides has a drag weight of 120, which is pretty damn low. The bosses had no qualms about locking onto the Beaver Brigade. But it seems that the Under Beavs are plagued with the same issue that most of the low to the ground creatures have. They don't like to attack the bosses. But Gamma bosses equal easy work as the Beavers take down the Gamma Ape with no issues and earn their first pass of the night. Once we entered the Gamma Broodmother Arena, I couldn't hold back these ferocious rodents. They charged in with their teeth glimmering from the glow of the slime coated walls in the Broodmother's cozy home. They're not the fastest creatures on land, but their smaller size made maneuvering them pretty easy. Surrounding the Gamma Broodmother wouldn't be an issue. DPS would be the issue. Even if the beavers are attacking, the speed at which they attack isn't the best. As we've seen time and time again, if they can't dish out some real pain, then the later rounds can get pretty damn dicey. For the Gamma Broodmother though, it's a walk in the park and the under beavers get another pass. The Gamma Dragon was up next and the furry wood chompers went to work on his disgusting feet. They dished up a pedicure from hell and nibbled their way to bone in probably the slowest way possible. The DPS was lacking hard. It wasn't as bad as the Terror Bird, but it wasn't great by any means. Out of muscle memory, I tried wedging Commander Utes under the dragon's belly, but then I remembered I didn't have to since the furballs were able to hold aggro. The veggie cakes were working wonders in all of these fights, but I still couldn't shake my concerns of their damage output. The Gamma Dragon took off a total of three times during this fight, and the Eager Beavers barely lost any health, earning their third pass. The Blue Portal was activated and the Beaver Brigade bounded boldly and burst onto the battlefield. Their beady eyes were blazing with a burning bravery as they sought their bounty with the Beta Bichicus. I know it's the Megapithecus, but I needed another bee to make it sound good. Fortunately, the Beavers are still firing on all cylinders, and they went to town on the Big Man. Whenever I do these fights, I usually use the Gamma fights to kind of gauge what the later fights are going to look like. For creatures like the Castoroides, I am constantly thinking of a way to minimize their faults. It's usually focused on positioning and how the hell I'm going to overcome their lack of DPS with the Alpha Broodmother. The Megapithecus honestly is just a speed bump, but I think we've only had one or two creatures that weren't able to beat the Alpha version. That didn't apply for the Beta Megapithecus and the Beavers though. We get a pass. The Beta Broodmother is a pretty good indicator on if the crew is going to be successful against the Alpha bosses but I have been fooled before. As weird as it sounds, I think that the fights are easier where the bosses won't aggro on your fighters and they only focus on the Uranus. Well, n not exactly easier, but I think I've had better results as far as total damage done to the bosses during some of those fights. If you take a look at the damage numbers for the beavers, you'll see that there's just not a whole lot going on for them. That fraction of a second delay between each attack can make or break them. But when half of the jerks don't even attack, it really hurts. It doesn't just hurt my feelings either. 
it hurts their family. They lost four of their brothers and sisters today, but as far as scores go, those deaths were worth it because the Beavers got themselves another pass. The Beta Dragon. I seriously think this guy is coded to take off and fly around about 10 times more than the Gamma or Alpha Dragon. I counted 8 total times during this fight, and 3 of those he just took off and landed on the other side of the lava river before coming back. He was playing with our little beaver hearts, and I didn't like it. I sicked the buck tooth gas station mascots onto the dragon because we were sick of his damn shenanigans. They locked onto his ankles and slowly nibbled their way to... Look, they took forever. Check out the timer at the top, they almost took as long as the terror birds. It's so nice to be able to fit under his damage arc and not have to worry about his fire breath, but damn. It sure would be nice if they were able to actually execute their attack animation. Another group of shorties has a successful run with a toe biting strategy and they drop the beta dragon with relative ease, earning themselves their sixth pass. The red portal was fired up and the underbees had an inventory packed full of delicious sweet veggie cakes. They were ready to sharpen their teeth on the hide of the Alpha Megapithecus. This fight was noticeably longer than past fights against the Alpha Ape. I was actually kind of surprised at how much damage he actually wound up dealing to several of the beavers. One thing I will say is that if you're using smaller creatures in these boss fights, more of them are going to be hit with every swing that those bosses take. We actually wound up losing two beavers in this fight, and not because of the ledge. The Alpha Megapithecus was actually able to dish out enough damage to end the lives of two of these little fellows. But that's why we bring 19, so they can beat the one like they did here, earning their 7th pass of the night. The Alpha Broodmother. Damn, she's so fine. Look at them legs. All eight of them. The beavers mistake them for trees, and would you know it, they tried to chew their way to victory. Tonight was not the night for games, because Mama Broods was pissed, and she started putting beavers into the dirt with a quickness. I don't know if she just didn't like all my beaver puns or what, but she was not in the mood for my shit today. I asked her, baby, I'm sorry, but can I just sleep on the couch? Don't do anything you're gonna regret. And she just killed me instead. In a land where volcanoes belched and spewed, beavers worked, their tails so shrewd. The Alpha Dragon with scales a big red brood approached their dams with a fiery pursuit. The Alpha Dragon roared, flames erupted, but the beavers were not disrupted. With teeth transformed to daggers so tight, they faced the dragon in the fiery light. They slapped their tails and cheered so loud as the dragon struggled in the volcanic shroud, their tails a flapping and teeth that bite, they conquered the dragon in the volcanic fight. Now everybody snap your fingers, cause they got another pass. That's number 15, baby, and I want to thank everyone from the bottom of my heart for watching. I know this channel is still very small, but it's bigger than I could have ever hoped for. I hope you've enjoyed this series, and if you have, please like and subscribe to help this community grow. Please feel free to comment below if there's any dinos you'd like to see or if you have any feedback. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.